Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this Bethesda Mod School video, we are going to go over how to build a building plan design in the game, export that data out, and then go through all the steps to make an add-on pack with that as a building plan that works in SS2. Now this is just snipped from a live stream that I did recently with the intention of showing you guys all the steps. So since it was done in real time, there's a lot of waiting for load screens and such. So the video is a little longer uh, than it normally would have been as a Bethesda Mod School video, but due to constraints to my time, I just wanted to get this out because we do have the Game Jam coming up on March 9th. So I want to get this out as quickly as possible. You might want to just watch it at 1.5x speed or something to get past all of the slow parts, but it is very, very achievable by pretty much anybody as long as you've got uh, the game on Windows and you're willing to go through it through tutorial few tutorial steps but uh, I think the next step the smartest thing to do would be let's start from the beginning and let's do the whole process and see how quickly I can do it now that we've gotten past the me screwing up because I couldn't remember how to do stuff um, so in that in that idea let's start by cocing to the um, to the cell so let's get our little cell up because I don't remember what it is so I'm gonna do guys cover your ears Cover your ears for a minute. Do something really loud. Everybody ready? All right. Now, uh, when we're editing, we can look for a giant spike in the volume <laughs> to, to, to see uh, where I need to cut the video for the for the VOD. Um, it looks like it's at 10:38 p.m. I'll write that down too. Hopefully, that will help as well. Okay. So we're in our cell. We've got nothing here because we didn't load our save. It has nothing to do with the plugin. Remember, it's the save file. So we're going to go to TGM. We're going to quickly build some stuff here. We're going to do a little, little simpler building this time because you guys kind of, you guys kind of get the idea now. So we're going to do this level one. You get no walls. You just get a bed. Where's my beds? You get a bed. We'll give you a nicer bed this time. It's still going to be dirty, but it's it's on. It's at least up there. Oh, you know what? We gave you a sleeping bag last time. We'll go up. We'll upgrade you to a dirty mattress, and then level two, you can have the frame. All right, that's it. That's all they get for, for level one. So we'll go ahead and export this. Oops, wrong button. Settlement layout, export layout, export it. Let that export. Snapping your neck ASMR, is that a thing? <laughs> that sounds terrible. Okay, so let's uh, we'll search by date modified. Here it is. Yep, eight two two seven one. Okay, so then we're gonna name this one uh, stream plan export o two level one o two because this is our second run at it. All right, and now let's swap ourselves over to level two. Cancel out that menu, and this time we will give them. What's the, is there a whole structure? Here, they get this. They get they get a couple extra walls this time. And we'll turn it this way so we can put the door toward the front. And then we'll put their bed up on a frame. Nope, still dirty mattress for you. Um, and we'll go ahead and give them, we'll give them a couple extra things. Let's give them, we'll give them a light. And how about, uh, do we have a very dirty rug? That is that is what our poor settler gets at level two. Mm. Here we go. Well, oh, even better, ripped rug, perfect. And you get a ripped rug. All right, and now let's go ahead and export level two. Export it, there we go. Gavman, yeah, is it okay to ask all the WRK grouped items that are listed as single static objects in the CK? For example, personal in-use stuff or the storage shelf foods? Usually no, um, but we have a lot of the items when you look in the CK. They will say in the name or in the editor ID, do not ask all. So you'll, those are ones where I mentioned you're going to, if you get a crash, you're going to need help. And uh, that's the first thing people helping you will tell you to do. Like, do you see any of them that say do not ask all? Like, Unselect those. I can show you how to unselect things in a moment. So let's uh, get this set up here. 
So we've got our two levels. And we will go ahead and save this. Save as stream building 02. Exit the game. And then we will load into the creation kit. That loud noise very close on my car breaker sounds. That's funny. That was just a, that was just a clap, clap behind the microphone. All right, and then we just need Fallout 4 for this first step because all we need to do right now is create a cell. Because what we're going to do next is import those items that we just set up in workshop mode into the creation kit because that is where all the visual magic happens. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. But yeah, once we once we get back around, circle back around to the steps where we are in the cell in the CK and we see all the items, I can show you, uh, Gavman, how you would deal with uh, one of those do not escal items. Sounded like King Gath bopping the mic with an empty water bottle. I don't have one of those handy. I should get one. It would be way less risky than these glasses of water. I like... I feel what's that what's that uh what was that movie? It was it was one of the ones after um Sixth Sense that he that M Knight did. Where the like the, the little girl leaves glasses of water everywhere. That is what that is what my desk often looks like. There's a bunch of half drinking glasses of water all over the place. Because every time I go upstairs, I make sure to bring myself a fresh glass just to be certain I have water handy. Uh okay. So now we are in the creation kit. We've got Fallout 4 loaded. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate this marker cell and name this something for ourselves. I'm going to leave the AAA so it stays up top. So we're going to go uh, stream to, uh, let's see, build cell. And then we're going to double click that cell so that our cell loads up in this render window. Now we're going to use the middle mouse to zoom out, select everything. Oh, and here's where I can show you, Gavman. So if you are trying to, when we get later to the static collection step, if you are finding that something is crashing you, um, in this cell view window, you can make this bigger, you can control click to remove things. So if you see something in this list that has the name, that has do not escol, do not S-C-O-L in the name, you should 100% remove that from your selection. Um, and that is probably what's causing your crash. But, all right, we're gonna delete all these, and then we're gonna save this plugin. And we're going to call this one stream building test two because we're starting over to show the whole process. And then we close out of here. Now we're going to try and do the, the trick we came across uh, earlier that uh, someone suggested where we just leave everything open. So next we need xedit. So if you don't have um, xedit installed, there is a uh, link. should be in, I believe it's in the description of the video right now, you can grab that. And once you have Xedit installed, you're going to run it from its install folder. I have it pinned right here. So we'll go ahead and load this up. And we'll go ahead and load our new plugin. So we're gonna just double click our, actually, oh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna, we're not gonna double click. We're gonna check it in. Cause what this is gonna do is it's gonna load up our entire load order. Now the benefit of this is when we do this next step, if there were any dependencies because we used an item from a certain mod, which I don't think I just did there. I think I used all vanilla items, but if we did, um, it can easily find and parent them to our plugins. Cause like we don't, you, you never want to have like 40 mods parented to your plugin. That's just not good practice because it makes the CK load slower and it will make people less likely to want to ever look at your, your thing because it will have so many dependencies. It'll make it really hard for them to ever use it. Uh, and then any like random patches and stuff that you have would get to parented that wouldn't be good. So the nice thing is um, the way Xedit works, it will only add masters, which are the, the parented mods that are absolutely necessary. All right, so now we're going to expand our stream building test two, expand the cells, and we're gonna find our the one we made, the build cell here. Um, and we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna hit apply script. And we're going to go search up that WSFW export to sell. If you don't see this, um, it is available in a tool, which I will link once again, since I know we are kind of going back through all this stuff here. So we'll copy link. 
I will make sure to put this in the VOD description as well. Uh, where is my share? All right here. I don't know why I kept looking past that. All right, so inside of here is this particular um, XEdit script. It will also get added to the um, Add-on Makers Toolkit that is available on Nexus. It will get added to that before Friday, likely tomorrow. Um, I do want to try and add that clone thing that I talked about at the beginning of the stream. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK to this. And this is going to ask us then to navigate to our uh, folder, which is under Documents, My Games, Fallout 4, Logs, Script, User. And then we got to find those uh, stream logs we created. So I think it was Stream Building Plan. What did we name that? Uh-oh, I don't remember which one's which. Okay, we can look at the date, though, and figure out which one's older. So we want the 1040 ones. So we'll grab uh, level one. And then it's going to ask us for a layer name. This is just going to help organize the items. I'm going to give myself a prefix for all my stuff so I can find it later. So we'll go ST for this. And then we're going to do level one. And then we'll do it once more for level two. Now, if you had created all three of your, your levels, you could do them all right now. That's fine. Uh, Let's see, stream level two, 1041. There it is. I'll do the same thing. Oops. Level two. Okay, and we should come down here. We can see our levels. And if we were to expand this, we can see the temporary items. So the items got placed. So we're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and close this and hit OK. All right. And, oh, this is my second. I was like, wait, why is the CK still open? That's my second copy of the CK. All right, now we're going to open the creation kit. So you can open this. You'll probably be opening it from Steam. I have it pinned to my start menu, but you'll probably be opening it from Steam. Chef, uh, XEdit is included with the CPC helper. Oh, cool. So that's included. That's part of the, um, the Wabajack install. That's interesting. All right, so now we're going to go to open on the creation kit here. We're going to go down and find our plugin. Double click that and hit set active file. Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> All right, now one thing I'm going to do here is you can see we don't have SS2 as a master and we're going to need it. So I'm going to also open up SS2. So the difference between creation kit and XEdit with masters is creation kit will always, if you save a plugin, that's active with another plugin loaded, it will try and make it apparent. So it's going to try and attach SS2 to our plugin, which is good. We need that in order to make an add on pack. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, generally, if you had built any items from SS2 when you were doing your in game building, then those would have been detected when we used that WSFW script and those the parent would have been added automatically. So any items that you or any mods you used items from when you did that import, they would be listed here. But we only used vanilla items, which is why we only see fallout4.esm here. Uh, we have to check an active file because we want the changes to save to this file. I think the movie is Signs. Yeah, it was it was like with aliens or something, right? I, I can barely remember the movie. I just remember scenes of like glasses of water all over the house. And I always think of that whenever I uh, whenever I come down to my office. And then that prompts me to do the dishes. So the CK, the CK is now going to be the biggest hold up this time around. Whereas the first time it was my shoddy memory. This time the CK is going to keep us down. I'm sure I'll forget another step this time, but hopefully uh, it's, it's still fresh in my mind after we just did it. All right, there we go. All right, so we need to first set up our stage models. So these are the things, like the structure of the building, because those are separate from the little individual items. So we're going to first load into our cell. And you'll see that we are zoomed in really awkwardly. So we're going to zoom out with the middle mouse, or the mouse wheel, rather. 
And then we're going to click on something, hold shift, move around, get a better view. And we can see all of our stuff. And then we're gonna hide level two. We're gonna check, hit the little A here next to level one, that makes it active. So whatever we do next will apply to that layer. So now I'm gonna get this out of the way, go to our object window, and we're going to search for static collection pivot dummy. There we go. You can also do, uh, if you don't want to type with the whole word collection, you can put an asterisk there and that will also find it. Um, and then we're going to grab this guy and we're going to drag it onto the actual title bar. When you put something on the title bar, it drops it at the very center of the cell, which is what all the items are imported around. So you can see there, we got this little cross thingy has appeared there. Then we're going to repeat for cell two. So we're going to unhide that, move the A to that one. So for level two and drop you in and there we go. All right, now we're going to go back to level one and we are going to hit select all loaded reference layer, references on layer. So right click on the layer, select all loaded references in layer. Then in here, we'll see everything gets highlighted. We're gonna come over here, right click, hit make static collection and you're gonna get this warning and you're just gonna click the first button to create it without those references. Those are the things that the player and NPCs need to be able to interact with so they can't be part of the structure. And we're gonna give this a new unique name. So I'm gonna need to uh, do a little filter on this. And I actually don't like that it's, I guess I need to give it a more unique uh, prefix. One of the reasons we do these prefixes is to make it so that you can find your stuff uniquely. So there we go, SBT, no one's using that, or the Bethesda isn't using that anywhere. So now whenever I search for this, only my items will come up. That's why we kind of do that. All right, so then this is going to be uh, level one structure. And I'm gonna put SCOL at the end because these static collections are special items. You can use them in your building plans. Um, but generally what we find is people are going to want for their final levels. So a lot of times we use these static collections, which are just cluster of, uh, clusters of items. Um, we often use those for our building stages, like the in-between stages, but the final level that the stays in your settlement for a long time, um, that one you want to be what's called a static record, which I'll show you how to create. And that's because static collections can't be nav meshed. And obviously you want your building to be nav meshed, otherwise the NPCs will just idiotically walk into the wall. Um, so we're gonna hit okay. And then this window filter, we'll just hit okay. Now I mentioned this last time I went through this, but because I'm hoping to VOD out this section, uh, if you get a crash right here, it means that one of the items that you had selected does not support being part of a static collection and you'll need to figure out which item that is. There are a lot of items in SS2. So if you're using the Wasteland Reconstruction Kit, we have some items that will have in their editor ID, do not S call. Um, so I'm going to bring up a search here and search for that so you can see what I'm talking about. But if we search for do not ask call, you'll see a whole bunch of these items. So when you are, not as many as I thought actually, I thought we had way more than that. Um, so if you are going to create this and it crashes, we just you just have to figure out which item is crashing it. It's almost certainly going to be a mod added item. It very rarely will Bethesda's items ever cause a crash. Uh, because some items just have weird collision and so you just kind of got to figure out which one it is. There are lots of people who have gone through this and figured out which ones can and cannot be. Most vanilla items can, most DLC items can. It's almost exclusively some mod items that cannot be static collection. So if you get a crash trying to create a static collection, that is why. It's also why we recommend in the, between every one that you create, you go ahead and pop a save so you don't lose all of your progress. All right, so next we're going to repeat the process for our level two structure. So we'll go ahead and switch over here. Again, select all loaded references come over here, right click, make static collection. We're gonna create without these references. We're okay with that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. So you don't really double click, you click it once and then click it again and it'll highlight the text. So then you can control C, control V and then we'll switch to level two. Okay to the object window filter. And if we were to change this, there we go. There's our second static collection. And once again, we'll save pretty much every time we do anything in the creation kit. All right, so the next step is we need to create statics. And the difference between a static and a normal, if we open up one of the, or I'm seeing a, a static and a static collection, if we open up a static collection, you see this little drop down. it's actually made up of individual pieces. For performance sake, and for the sake of being able to uh, nav mesh things, we need to convert them into a static record. And a static record, so if I bring up a uh, building, so if we go to, just search for building, um, let's see if we can find a good one here. 
sure, the laser cannon building, um, you can see that it is just one single mesh file. There are not the little drop down with individual pieces, and this is just more performant. And again, we can nav mesh it, which is pretty important later. So we're gonna go to do this. What we do is we open up these static collections and we hit recreate NIF from data. And now that's going to create inside of your Fallout 4 directory in the SCOL folder, there's going to be a new folder named after your plugin file. That's where you'll find this NIF. Um, so you can jump over to your Fallout 4 directory, go into data, meshes, static collection, and there you will find your plugin. Uh, there are a couple things you could do here, uh, but I would just I would recommend not leaving your stuff in the static collection directory. Um, so what I'm going to do is grab this mesh. I'm going to hit Control X to cut it. Come back over here. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to our stream plans folder that we've been working on. We're going to make a plan number two. You don't have to make subfolders. I just like two to stay organized. And we'll go ahead and drop this in here. And then we're going to give it a different name. So I'm actually going to name it the same as without the S call. There's our structure. And then we will do the same for level two. Recreate NIF. Go back here. I should be able to just hit back a few times to end up in that folder. There it is. Control X to cut it. Come back into our plan 02, paste it in, and we want to grab this name, make this our level two structure. Now, for those of you guys who have made building plans before, you know that I'm skipping some steps. There are some stuff you can do with a program called NIF scope. Um, totally not necessary. Uh, what I'm trying to show you guys right now is the minimum requirement to make a building plan that will work in the contest. Um, and then afterward, I'll show you like some of the fancier stuff you can do if you want to really get into building plan making or if you would prefer to release your building plan in a more perfect form where it works as well as everybody hopes because that will get you more points in the contest. But uh, not necessary, and I'm sure a lot of people would be happy to just have more structures to build with. All right, so the next thing we need to do is now get those static meshes we made into the creation kit. So you can see here we have two meshes that are very similarly named, right? We have this high-tech laser cannon building level 2F and then level 2F S-Call. Um, there are two ways you can tell the difference between them. One is from the little icon. You can see the statics are blue and the S-Calls have the little SC. Uh, but you can also open up the form like I showed you earlier and see that one of them has this drop down of all the pieces and the other one has a bunch of other stats instead. So we need to create this kind of the blue record, the static record for those. Now there's a really cool thing with the CK. You can actually open up in Windows. You can grab things that are in your meshes folder and just drag them in. As long as in the object window you have a specific category selected, it'll create records of that type. So if I selected activator, dragged them in, it would make activators. We want statics. So we're gonna just go ahead and drag these in. And there we go, there's our new static records of our structures. Now obviously didn't make a lot of sense for me to make this level one since all it is, if we unhide all this, uh, the level one is just this vanilla prefab, uh, but that was just for the, for the example. But you can see for my level two, it actually baked the carpet into the prefab because the carpet was actually static. So it was actually capable of that. If that's something you don't want, um, that's something going through the full Atomaker's Toolkit, you'll learn how to avoid that, avoid specific items from ending up in your building, but it doesn't hurt anything to go in there. So now we've got uh, our two static structures set up here. So we'll go ahead and save. Um, now, technically we are, nope, we're not done. There's one more step we gotta do. There, I say technically we're done in the uh, CK for this stage, but we're not, we gotta export some stuff. All right, so now that we've got our structures created, our statics, next thing we need to do is get our other items, so the non-structure, we need to get these items, their positions, exported so that we have them in a spreadsheet. And what the spreadsheet's gonna do, it's really easy to create, um, is tell the XEdit software we're gonna use how to position the, the items in the building when the player uses it. So we're gonna go ahead and select our structure and hit one twice on our keyboard to hide it. So then all that will be visible left here are the individual, what we call stage items, the, the items that the player needs to be able to interact with or that have some sort of functionality like lights will be here, uh, doors, anything that does more than just exists. And we're gonna go ahead and draw a box to make sure we've got them all selected. We're gonna go file, import, export, ref placements for selection. And then we're gonna go ahead and give this a name. Now you might wanna create yourself a subfolder here. I actually am gonna do that right now. We're gonna call this uh, building, or we'll call this stage item exports, just to keep it from being a mess. And then we're gonna go ahead and give this a name. We'll go call this uh, stream build test 
plan O2 level one, stage items. I don't copy that because I'm gonna use that again because that was a mouthful. And then we'll unhide that, go to level two, click on the structure, hide it, grab all these. I think there's only two actually. Same thing, import, export, replacements for selection. And then we will, where's our new folder? Here it is. And this time it's level two stage items. And then if you want all of the items you hid with one one to return, just hold alt and push one, by the way. Um, so if we come back here and I'll see all the items both on both layers reappeared, the ones that you hit, hid with just one one. So there's two ways to hide items, tapping one twice while you have it selected, or you can hide the layer that the items are on. All right, so now we are done in the CK, but I'm gonna leave it open for just a minute, just in case um, I forgot a step. So the next step, we're gonna need a couple of things. You're going to need um, a copy of Excel or OpenOffice. I'm gonna show you an OpenOffice because that's free to everybody. You can get it at openoffice.org. You need specifically the Calc program. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and run Calc, OpenOffice Calc here make this full screen and we are going to go to insert sheet from file and we are going to navigate to our stage item exports and we're going to grab our uh, level one here and we get this little pop-up now you'll see these little arrows in here those are tabs so we want to separate by tab and we'll uncheck by comma um, so now we get a nice set of data from the CK Go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and do it again. And insert. And we'll grab level two. And tab saved that time, hit OK. Okay, now we're going to, so what that ended up doing is it put our level two on a one sheet and level one on a one sheet. Well, we need to combine them together. Uh, before we do that, so first we're gonna grab our, we're gonna go to our level one sheet here. We're going to add level at the top, and then we're going to type in one. So now any items, and if you had multiple here, just put a one in this column for all of them. Then you're going to go to your level two sheet, and you're going to grab not the header row, but you're going to grab the rest here, and copy them, and paste them below level one, and then we'll put a little two number. And if you had a level three, you could do that for that as well. Now we're going to delete this sheet. We don't need, uh, don't need the level two sheet anymore, because we want everything on one sheet here. Then we're going to go to file, uh, save as we want to save it as a CSV file CSV and we want to check in edit filter settings I'll go ahead and put it in here and we're going to name it uh, plan 02 all stage items and hit save keep current format and OK to that and yes it's warning us that it only kept the current sheet that we're looking at which is what we wanted Okay, the next thing we need to do, we're gonna close this file, is we need to create a, uh, a list of our building plan models. So those editor IDs. And this was a good reason why we kept uh, the CK open too. So in the Atom Makers Toolkit, which you can find a link in the description below, um, inside the file you download from there, you'll see spreadsheet templates, and you can open up this building models template. Uh, eventually you'll figure you don't actually need this, um, this is just kind of a, a demonstration, but it's a good helpful thing for me to explain something. So we're going to hit comma because it is a proper CSV file. We don't want it to open with tabs. And you can see down here in this preview that it's going to open correctly. So what this template is basically showing you is that each row represents one level of your building plan. The top, the default, this is uh, like your building stages, so your building materials. So you'll notice when you build certain people's, especially in add-on packs, you'll build one of their building plans and like some chunk of the structure will appear as if it's waiting to be assembled. That's what this is, this row is for. This is your level one row, hence the L1s throughout it. L2, your level two row and level three. Now the actual number of entries here is kind of arbitrary and that's the point. It's trying to show you that you can put as many or as few as you want. Uh, but the most important thing to note is that the last entry in each row should be your final building. That's the one you want to sit there forever for the NPCs to use until the plan levels up. Now in the case of our first example, we're just gonna have single, uh, we're not gonna have any in between stages. We're just going straight to the final model. So we're gonna delete out all this stuff. So go ahead, oh, I can't. We are in the uh, template that's read-only that I opened, so of course we can't do that. So we're gonna go back to, uh, so we actually don't need this spreadsheet. This, spread, this template is just an example to explain it to you. We can actually go ahead and just do a new spreadsheet. 
and we'll just type in default in the first because we just want to use the default building materials. Now for here, we want to grab the oops, wrong CK. I have two copies of it open. We want our level one structure. So you want the editor ID of your level one structure for the next thing. So we'll go back and open office here. And that's going to be our, the, so uh, the first row is building materials. Second row is level one. Then we want level two structure. Oops, level two, which I named them the same except for the two. And now we don't have a level three. So what we'll do in, in that case is we'll just reuse the level two structure. Now we're going to go save as, oops, oops, save works fine. All right, and we're going to go to CSV once again, just like we did for the stage items. And this time we're going to name this stage model. So that's what we call it internally, the difference. The stage items are like the individual bits uh, and the models are the actual structures. So again, we you could have as many entries as you want in each of these rows. And those are going to be the, you know, as a player, when you're experiencing it in game, you'll know that a lot of building plans, you'll see like first the scaffolding comes up and then like the left wall comes on, the right wall comes on. All that is is a whole bunch of model files just listed in order here. Go ahead and save this. Keep current format. Okay, okay. Close this. We are now done with Excel. And we are done with our uh, CK for now. We'll be back in the CK in just a moment. Um, actually, I don't know if we have to. We actually, we, I think we can go right from this testing game. I can't recall now. Told you guys those are going to forget some stuff between attempts. All right, now let's load up or close out of the CK. It's because we're going to load back into XEdit. Because you can only have the plugin open in one or the other, or it won't be able to save. So now we'll come into XEdit. And we're going to search for our file. So this time we want test two. Um, now in this case, we've already got the plugins mastered to it. So if I extend this, you can see that it has masters of Fallout 4, Workshop Framework, and SS2. So we can just double click this and it will load those masters as well. And then it won't load all that other stuff. So it'll make it run a little bit faster. So we're just going to get the bare minimum we need. And we're going to expand this out and we're going to go to the file header, right click on it, hit apply script. And then you're going to search for SS2. And if you don't see SS2 showing up, it means one of two things. Either you need to check in this little box or you have not extracted the XEdit scripts here. You need these two files, these .ps files in this SS2 folder should go into your uh, FO4 edits folder. If you go in there, there's an edit scripts and that's where those will go. And then you will see those here. You might have to close this window and hit apply script again if you are just copying them now. And we want the, I always forget the name of these scripts there. I really want to, I want to go through one of these days and rename all of these scripts because I always forget which ones are which. Uh, we want import stage data. Here we go. SS2 import stage data. We're gonna hit okay. And we want to do an entire building plan. There are other options here you could do if you wanted to just do a level for your plan or an, or a skin. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, but we're going to just do a simple building plan. And now the name field is what the player will see. So we're going to go uh, SBT. So I this is something that you don't have to do, but it makes it look nice and neat in the game. Um, you'll notice that most add-on packs that you have have picked themselves a, a two or three character prefix and they put that in brackets and then a space and then it helps all the plans line up nicely. Like ours say SS2 or SS2C2 to help players know where it's coming from so that if they want to recommend it to somebody else or if they um, are they had it in one save and they can't figure out where it is in the second, they can figure out where it, which plugin it's coming from or maybe in the next playthrough they're like, I'm going to abandon something. They know not to abandon the ones that have the, the prefix they like, etc. It's just helpful so players understand where their building plans are coming from. So we'll go test plan. Editor ID, we need, we want a unique editor ID for the same reason we did in CCK to search things out. Um, so we'll start our editor ID with that. The mod prefix is because this thing, after we hit OK to it, so this is all like pretty simple stuff to fill out this form. Uh, but there's going to be dozens, if not hundreds of forms that get generated by clicking start. And each one of them will get this prefix here, which is very helpful. Um, so we're going to call this... Uh, stream building test plan o uh i guess in this plugin it's 01 but we'll name it 02 just so everyone following along with the entire stream understands so this is our second plan then then you choose the type it's for ours was had a bed so it's residential we did a two by two and it was a single person 
So we're good there. Themes, this is totally optional, but there is a system in SS2 that I think very few players are aware of where you can actually filter out what building plans your settlers will use. And this is how it's done. So you give it any of the themes that are relevant. So ours was very simple. The description, this is what will, will come up to the player if they are reading about the plan. So for example, if they choose, um, if they choose the view building plan details, it will show them this. There's another spot where you'll be able to put in your own name. Um, I can show you that in game. I don't know if the Xedit script supports it, but in the game I can show, or in the CK I can show you how to do that so that you can, players know that you are the designer in game. Um, so we'll go ahead, and that, that might actually might be what you put here in the description. So I'm gonna try that just because it's been a while since I've filled this out, but we're gonna go ahead and put uh, single person building. I guess we should give it something a little bit more it was simple. Single person building, no doors. And then we'll put, uh, I'm gonna put this in here. I don't think that this is correct, but I just, I'm just curious how this is gonna look in game. Um, and then we wanna check in all these boxes. We wanna register a thing. We want building previews. So that way when the player is previewing the building, they can see our model. And then the stacked moving if you don't check this in, then if the player were to pick up the plot, all your items would your or your building at least would disappear from the building as the player dragged the plot. So checking this in sets it up so that the player can pick up the whole plot and move everything alongside it. Then we're gonna click the three dots next to model files and we are going to navigate to our game. Now, um, one of the things that I've set up that I talked about earlier, but for the case of the VOD, uh, I'm going to explain again is getting to your Fallout 4 folder is kind of a pain. It's kind of deep in your C drive. So once you get there, um, you can right click on the folder and hit send to desktop to create a shortcut. And then in this open windows within Xedit and a lot of other software, you can go to there, jump to your shortcut, and that will take you right to the folder and just saves a lot of time. Uh, so we're gonna go stage item exports and we are doing the models file. So we're gonna grab our stage models and then we'll repeat the same thing for our stage items and it remembered where we were. And we'll go ahead and hit start. And you can see on the left here, a whole bunch of different form types generated. Um, the more stage items you had, the more records under misc item you would find. It created uh, this uh, description for our building plan. It created a version global. It creates us a quest to handle our add-on registration so that our buildings get registered. It basically does all of the tedious, awful stuff for you. And that's it. So now we hit okay. And then you can load this up in your mod manager or you can do like I'm gonna do here, put it right into my plugin side text file. And then we'll go back to Fallout 4 and run this. Here we go. And I will, as soon as we get this in game and tested, in one go like this, I will uh, stop and answer questions. I just wanted, I wanted to have a, a, a quick video we could uh, point to to be like, here you go, here's here's it all working in uh, without King Gath fumbling around. All right, we're gonna go to this one, this is fine. All right, don't mind that error. I have no idea what the save, what hell this save has been through. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna need someone to assign to here. Codsworth. Congratulations, you live in this house now. All right, now let's. I I'm gonna give it a minute to make sure that my add-on pack had a chance to register. Which it probably did by now. If you find that your building plan isn't here and you're certain you followed up along all the steps, uh, the best way to get it to come in is to save the game after you've loaded in and then immediately reload that save and that will trigger 
all add-on packs in SS2 to re-register. So if you find that it's just stuck for some reason or not responding, which I get a lot of reports of that, even though clearly we're having good luck today, um, that's a good way to resolve it. But you can see here, we've got our plan showed up. It has our description there in the middle, single person home, simple single person building, no doors, and designer King Gath. Usually, the you can see there's a couple places that we often put the name. We put by the person in the name of it. Um, there's another place we usually have the designer show up and uh, it's again been so long since I built one of these that uh, usually we don't put it in the description there I don't think but let's check yeah we usually don't put it in the description just if you want to get it close to how we have them in SS2 proper you don't have to you can do whatever you want you can put your name all over the thing if you want um, and then if you if I right click right thumbstick here you get the color preview of it and that's all set up for you automatically we we'll go ahead and buy that plan hit accept and we should get the prompt to pay for it. And the costs are all based on the class, so you don't have to worry about setting up costs or anything. Though, if you're interested, you can actually do that. That's more of an advanced feature, but you can actually make your building plan cost a different amount. That is all done in the creation kit. And we'll pay and build and give this a moment. Now we ran into this before we saw, it. for some reason it's spawning our items immediately. I think that that is a that is a consequence of not having any st any individual stages, which are fairly easy to add in. Uh, and then as soon as you have at least one additional stage, and I think that prevents the items from showing up immediately. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't hurt anything to have a floating bed there for a moment. Um, but uh, we should see our structure appear in about 30 or 40 seconds here. So this is just the same as any other building plan. It's no different than one that was completely designed in the creation kit now. Um, the fact that we did some of the design work in game. One of the reasons we needed like all that script, all the, the multiple uses of XEdit is because what we realized was the data in the game, like we can pull all that data. We can pull the position data and like what it is that the player built and that's all we need and that's all that's that runs some elements. It's just a bunch of numbers. Um, that's why those spreadsheets are just a whole bunch of number data. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that uh, that plot tool, the thing that has that crazy infinite void world where you can build in, the reason that that works for this is I set up a settlement and there's those red markers on the ground that are the exact size of uh, the plot and they are centered at in that world at the 000, zero, zero coordinate. So that way when we take the coordinates and transpose them to the zero point of any plot the player places, the coordinates line up perfectly. And then we use some fancy calculus to hand or handle the uh, rotation, but, uh, or I guess it's not calculus, it's probably trig. Um, use some fancy math to calculate the angle. That's a little more complicated, but the actual uh, position data, very easy. And now we can cheat here and use the unlock level command, CF unlock level, to go to level two. Should happen fairly instantly. There we go. There's our structure with the the uh, rug. We get our bed and we get our light. And you can see uh, the light lights up because we have it rigged up. That plots will automatically power everything. All right, so I snipped the live stream from there. That is uh, all you need to watch to get started on there. I would highly recommend that if you get into this, you enjoy it, that you either watch the full live stream or even better, Go read the actual full Atom Makers Toolkit. It'll teach you way more stuff. Um, even if you just went through the Learning Building Plan section, which is a short set of eight tutorials, you will learn a lot of the nitty gritty on there. You'll be able to do a little bit more detailed things, some stuff that maybe you wouldn't have learned from this video. But just by following this video, you have got enough information that you can compete in the Game Jam, and hopefully you can make building plans for fun as well. All right, can't wait to see what you guys do with this. Take care and enjoy the mods.